of Bono writes, I often get coupons for free or discounted 8x10 photo prints, and I love that up-close view we get from an 8x10, but when it comes to getting them scrapped, I'm lost. Now I have a drawer full of oversized memories, and I'm never quite sure how to get them into the scrapbook album. Glitter Girl, can you help me love Bono overcome her big print problem? Of course I can. First, I wanted to just take out a few of my favorite layouts with big prints to have a look at some different techniques that I tend to use with those larger images. And one of the things I um, really enjoy using with bigger prints are border strips because essentially that's what you'll have left on the page if you use something that's almost the full width of the 12x12 12 12 page. So this is a great time to use border stamps and uh, border punches to create a title that fits into a border, all sorts of just different things that you can line up along the edge. In fact, it's a great way to use papers that come in strips of pattern where they might take all the different patterns from the collection and put them on one sheet in strips or otherwise have some sort of border print in the set. So um, that is something that I tend to come back to time and time again when I use bigger prints that take up the majority of the page. This is the same sort of idea but on the other side, um, the other direction. Washi tape is really good for and things like this because you don't have to worry about how much you're going to use. You'll have plenty on the roll, so just keep dishing it out. It'll be absolutely fine. And I love this sort of thing that you can do where on a landscape, the title is going to go across the top or the bottom really easily. But you can do the same thing with a portrait because you can just run the title on the vertical rather than the horizontal. And that will then give you the chance to have something that's more of a cluster, something that's a bit chunkier in the embellishment rather than so many different vertical strips. So it's a little bit of a different take on the same principle. And this is one that um, I showed here um, last year sometime. And this is taking that same idea but trying to purposely make it less square. So this piece in the background is tilted, the embellishments are um, less about being in a line, more about being in small groupings that are a little bit more, um, just a little bit more free on the page because I wanted to pick up the fact that these old ruins are not so um, straight and clean like modern design. Obviously there's a lot more rough around the edges and that makes them a little bit uh, uneven and, and that's their character. So um, scattering the embellishments around like that was a better match for this particular image. Also because the main line in the photo, the leading line, isn't straight. It doesn't go on the straight vertical. It, it works because it's on the angle. So if I were to then put lots of vertical or horizontal um, strips or borders in this layout, it would really contradict the lines in the images. And I really love the picture, so I wanted to make sure that it was still the focus and I wouldn't want those elements to uh, contradict. This one started as this single page with the large image and then a spot for journaling, the title, and all sorts of different things. It's a bit uh, older layout, so the supplies are a little bit different, but what was current at the time. But then I had quite a few other pictures and this one didn't quite tell the whole story, so I extended this into a two-page layout by adding the other angles of the, um, the fairy and having a bit more room just to play with the embellishments and make this kind of um, layered rub-on technique work somewhere else, which I thought made it look more purposeful rather than looking like I tried a bunch of rub-ons and I wasn't quite sure to committing once I used it twice and then a little bit up at the top too made me think that... Um, that it worked a bit better as something that was done on purpose. Um, and I quite like the fact that because this photo is so big and there's so much to see, that that was balanced with lots of empty space, just that plain cardstock in the um, opposing page. So um, yeah, it can be balanced one really big image with uh, as many smaller images as you want. One thing you may notice from all of these examples is that this isn't an 8x10. It's actually an A4 print, which um, is the normal paper size. In, in England, we don't use 8.5 by 11 paper. We use A4 paper, which is about 8 and a quarter by 11 and 3 quarters. So it works really well for... Um, going all the way to the edge of the page except for a small border because it's almost 12 inches but it means that you can print it on a normal household printer I don't have to use a, a large format printer I only have a, a standard format printer so I really like that size and um, this one is a, a 12 by 14 print that was cropped a little bit or, or 
rework to be the right size. So this one I didn't print at home, I ordered it um, from a photo developer and that does go all the way to the edge of the 12 by 12 cardstock. This one I printed on an A4 sheet but with a white border so that makes it a little bit smaller. And um, if you want to try printing something this kind of size but with American paper sizes, try printing an 8.5 by 11 photo sheet. Just You can buy photo paper in um, in normal paper sizes and then print it as a borderless print so that it's the full eight and a half by eleven size and give that a try. But since you asked specifically about eight and a half by eleven or not eight and a half by eleven but eight by ten, I'm gonna give that a shot and Here's the 8x10 that I'm going to scrapbook, which um, is a very old school photo print, so a, a sort of idea that you could use with any sort of school photo, whether it's that portrait shot you get every year or whether it's a school activity, but 8x10s always seem to be a very standard size that you get when you do something for a school um, mass printing kind of thing. And I started with, I'm um, looking at some different paper options, I started with this Hello Summer collection by Echo Park, which is really... Um, very cool, happy tones for summer. So, aqua, orange, pink, yellow, really springy green. And what I wanted to show you is the one thing to keep in mind when you working with eight by tens or large prints is that it really helps to start with a pattern that's a bit more plain. So, looking at the A sides of this collection, one, it's not a very good match to the colors. But also, all of the A-sides are really bold prints. So this side wasn't really what was working for me. But the other side of all these prints, the B-sides of the Echo Park papers are really small repeating patterns that are a lot more subtle than those really bold um, A-sides. So this was really in my running, especially things like um, this kind of aqua, and there's um, this aqua floral, and a yellow and white chevron. Things like that were really, um, I, I was thinking, I was almost persuaded. And I thought that maybe the yellow and the white would be a good contrast to all the red, white, and blue in the photo. But then I came across another combination that I liked a little bit better. So I'm gonna put Hello Summer away for this week, but I think you'll see it um, on some projects coming up very soon, but I'll show you what I chose in the end. I wanted to choose something that was that neutral, more subtle print. So I've gone with this um, Craft and White Chevron. It's called Chevron One. It's in the Classic Calico Volume Two collection. And this is actually printed on craft cardstock. So this is not a pattern paper where it's printed both sides. It's um, white ink on craft cardstock. So it's really nice quality. It feels really lovely and um, and it's a subtle pattern. Plus, I know um, chevrons are everywhere right now, but I think that um, the chevron is something that comes up in cheerleading uniforms and things like that. So I think it's actually topical use of chevron pattern paper. I'm quite proud of that. Okay, so other patterns that I'm going to mix in with that. These come from, well, two of them are from Basic Gray, but they're from two completely different collections, but I love them together. So this red is from What's Up, and it's the one with all the great big balloons on one side. It's called Balloon Festival. But on this side is a tiny red and white flower with little blue dots in the center. So that's perfect for my colors. And it's again, it's a small repeating pattern. So even though this one is bold in color, so I'm not gonna use that for the background, we're gonna use bits and pieces of this, but it's small enough that um, the pattern will be really easy to see even in small pieces. And then this, which is not small, not subtle at all, um, this is from PB&J and it's called Picnic Basket and it's great shades of blue floral. And the other side is lovely too because it's this teeny, teeny, tiny, thin chevron that's distressed around the edges and it's a navy blue, which is always a good thing to find in scrapbook supplies because there aren't very many navy blues out there. So and I like both sides of this one for this, um, for this layout. And then I also wanted to pull something a little neutral, so I've pulled this white with gray dots, which is Echo Park, and it's from one of the mini themes called Dearest. So it has this floral on one side, but the polka dot on the other. With that, I'm going to um, take a journaling card from the Cosmo Cricut 23 collection, and these, um, just flip through. These, I'm going to do some more stuff with 23 because... I kind of liked it online. I got it in person and I love it. And it looks very much like letterpress and vintage and oh, I love it. But I'm going to use some gray, a gray journaling card here to match um, that gray uh, polka dot pattern paper. 
And then letter stickers, I've pulled out um, one of these Primas, a new set of colors from the Prima Mini Alphabets because it has this really nice re uh, rich red here. And then some thickers in the Dear Lizzie um, puffy, uh, puffy letters that are just kind of slightly off white into a gray shade. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use. Plus, I have this same photo in both an 8x10 and a wallet size. And I'm going to see what I can come up with um, using that 8x10 size. So it'll be a little bit like scrapbooking an A4, a big, big page width um, image. But slightly different since it's not um, that it's going to have that 2 inches extra. One great thing about using enlargements is it means that since they take up so much of the page, the rest of the page can come together really, really quickly once you get a hang of how you like the page design. I originally thought that I would matte this photo straight onto the red pattern paper, but I think that the, um, the size of the photo and this really kind of repeating print just isn't, um, there's not enough contrast in between the two. I think it's hard to focus on the image when you've got that really bold pattern. So I went ahead and cut a narrow mat of the more neutral pattern to put around the photo and see um, what I thought would work here. And I think this is much easier to see. So you could do that just by printing the photo with a white border, or if it came with a white border, leaving it on. Um, but if it didn't, you can add one with um, some neutral pattern paper or neutral white cardstock, off-white cardstock, anything like that. Um, just to give it that little bit more border to make it uh, easier for your eye to take in the big image and separate it from the pattern papers and the embellishments and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and layer all these up. And obviously when you're working with a really big picture, you can um, make use of some of the pattern paper that's in the middle of these mats that you won't uh, see so that you can get a bit more embellishment out of them if that helps your um, process. So especially if you want to make a double page, it does mean that you would be able to make a double page layout which is one sheet of each pattern and still have plenty of pattern to make it work. Using a mat like this that's off-centered, I try to keep the photo straight, um, provided that the photo is kind of composed in a standard way, and then um, angle the mat ever so slightly, but really do keep the angles very, very small so that um, your eye doesn't get taken away too much by a, a really sharp angle. It just wants to look just a little um, a little bit off center, just enough that you can tell that you did it on purpose and not um, by accident. So I've placed this over to the side of the page so that everything is kind of facing into where the title is going to go. So the direction of the photo is going into the center rather than off the edge of the page. I want to bring in some of that blue so I've cut just a, a box that I can layer in here. And then I can start pulling up these layers to put things underneath. And because I've used this pattern on this side, I want to balance it on the diagonal across the photo. So I'm going to cut a smaller strip and use a border punch and add that up here. I also know that I'm going to um, bring in this journaling card. I'm going to remove the top of this and use this space for my title, this space for my journaling, and then have a cluster of embellishment up here. Right, since this photo is a little bit silly, I've gone with a title that's a little bit silly, and that's going to flow into the journaling. I'm going to write about the gigantic pom-poms and the fact that I teased my hair to no end. Um, in this space, I've gone ahead and used the journaling card because I want to write that stuff down, but I did also have that wallet photo, and I could have used that here, just repeating the image in, um, in two separate sizes, which is good for portraits and things where you might not have a story that's going to take up space on the page. So if you get stuck for trying to fill in a space with writing, um, other than embellishment, you might also think about that same image in a smaller size or a related image. But in this case, I'm just going to use the big photo. And now I know I'm going to um, add my journaling here, and I want to show you something new I picked up from the store. It's in the section with the Copic markers, so you might not have noticed it if you weren't looking to go and um, if you weren't looking for markers, but they do this called a multi-liner, which is essentially like their journaling pens, and um, a really fine tip pen, but it comes in gray. And um, so if you wanted an alternative, I use, I normally use black and brown. These are the pens I normally use for journaling, the Precision Pens by American Crafts. Um, and I always keep a black and a brown on my desk, but they don't come in, this doesn't come in gray, not currently, and I like the idea of um, a gray pen because I'm using a lot of gray in my layout, so I just thought I'd uh, point that out in case you missed it. And um, then I'm going to add my embellishment with a punch, and this is called the Embroidery Punch. 
um, which has all sorts of little cutouts and I'm going to cut that from that tiny chevron that's on the back of the floral paper and build up a couple of embellishments and um, one to go on this side and one to go over here. So I've used the punch to make this layered embellishment and I'm going to make a second one to go up here so I'll show you all those steps. I punched one of the embroidery punch um, designs from the chevron and then a circle punch that was slightly bigger uh, from the, uh, the red pattern paper and then used brown ink on the edges of both of those pieces so that they will be easier to see as an embellishment because otherwise the patterns um, run together a little bit but that helps give it a defined edge. Then I'm going to attach this with some foam squares, pop tots, just putting them on the center piece. And I'm going to cover up the middle too, so if I just had a larger pop dot, I could always put it there too, it's not going to show in the end. Just do one more here. And then center that on the other circle. And then just glue two things on top. One is a red button, and you could use any button, of course. These um, have glitter around the edges, and they're, uh, they're from a Christmas line. They're from American Crafts Holly Day. They came with silver, green, white, and red. Um, but if you take them aside from the rest of Christmas papers, obviously those colors can go for plenty of other things. So I just um, glued the button onto the center. And you could stitch it, but it, the stitching isn't going to show because then the next step is to take basically one of the biggest gems I could find in my basket of bling and put that in the center. Stick that down once it's in the right place. Now, one of the things I found was that when I started to add it here, I ended up with that pattern on the same, it was just two layers of the same pattern and that made it hard to see. So I decided to grab some washi tape, one of my favorite things, and, and made two layers, just two strips of the washi to separate the pattern out. So I'm going to repeat that up here in this corner even though it's not quite as um, as problematic with the overlapping because I've got that extra piece of the blue up here. I've got tape stuck to my fingers. There we go. And I'm I have a backup copy of this photo, and I'm only putting tape over the uh, over something that isn't going to change the the meaning of the picture. I'm not blacking anything out or anything. So, obviously, if you have something important in that space of the photo, then don't cover it up. Just leave this step off and move your embellishment around until it works. That gives me a bit of color up here. And then I can just put my adhesive on the back of that circle, layer that up. And I've added my journaling. And then if I really want to stay true to the other things I've been making lately, I might sprinkle a little bit of ink there. And in that case, I'd cover up the um, the photo itself and just sprinkle ink in those little corners. I'm a little undecided on that, so I'm going to have a, a little think about that and see how it looks compared to the other pages that would fall in that album uh, similar and see if it needs ink or if that's all done. But that's my suggestion for scrapping 8x10s. See if you can uh, try a nice big mat, some alternating colors. See if you can uh, try something over to the side but leave a little bit of space and try something on the diagonal to pull it all back in together. And that's your challenge for this week, so grab a big photo. I'd love to see it in the gallery. Thanks so much for watching. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.